All right, everybody. Hi there. It is Donovan Rose from Nerd Initiative. And today I am joined by the incredibly beautiful and talented Melissa Ponzio to discuss the upcoming Paramount Plus original film, Teen Wolf the Movie. How are you doing today, Melissa? I'm great, Donovan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really Absolutely. excited to talk about the movie. Oh my gosh, me too. So I do have to <laughs> let you know that I am a little bit starstruck because I was a huge diehard Teen Wolf fan. Every single Sunday, I'd go and watch the show, see what villain was in Beacons Hills, Beacon Hills next, and yes, yes. go and watch the after show and everything. So I'm so excited that it's finally back and I get to discuss it with you. We're, we're, we are totally honored because... Um... You know, we're all very grateful and thankful and, you know, knock us over with a feather that we had a second chance. Not everybody gets a second chance to come back, you know, exactly. and uh, we loved shooting the the show, 100 episodes. And um, to get that call to know that Paramount Plus was interested in doing the movie. I mean, we were all so very excited. And then it was like coming back to family. So it was an amazing opportunity. And we know that we wouldn't be here without our friends and fans of the show and how um, dedicated everybody is to uh, Beacon Hills at all. And we're just really super grateful and thankful. Yeah, no, I mean, it was an incredibly anxious five year wait. I mean, yes. I had almost given up all hope. Like, are we getting another season? Are we getting a movie? What is going mm -hmm. on? And they left it so open that you knew something had to be coming eventually. But it was just the anticipation. And then I'm sure COVID didn't help. And it was just all that. But I'm finally glad less than like a month away, just over a month away. And I'm so excited uh, to finally see what project you guys have been working up. So <laughs> Yeah, us too, us too. It was interesting because, um, you know, to have all of those episodes to pull from, all of that rich history, all that rich creativity, um, it was it, when when Jeff made all the calls saying that, you know, this was, you know, going to go forward, it was like, how are they going to take so much and put it into, you know, um, I, I don't want to say so little, but a different type of framing, a different type of shooting, a different type of storytelling. And I think they did a fabulous job. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed that everybody loves it and we, we can do more, you know, I mean, that would be amazing. Again, we have so much to pull from and um, we really, really, this cast and this crew really, really enjoy working together. And so I hope that shines through. I feel like that shown through on the shows, you know, the chemistry was real. So absolutely. No, yeah. I think I think like even though I, I Tyler was like, what, 18 when the show actually started or something like, but he is kind of like, you know, your adopted son almost in real life. Like you come back after he's like when he went to college, you can say for those five years that you guys weren't in the Teen Wolf universe and he came back from college now, essentially, is what you can say. Right. Totally, totally. And, and, you know, in real life, when you really think about the years that we, we were on the show and apart from the show, um when we came back it's like you know the young ones that i refer to the younger ones you know they came back as these complete fully baked cakes whereas when we were shooting you know they were they were young and they were getting experiences and influences and different opportunities and you know maybe pulling away from family out on our own trying new things getting different bookings and so all of that kind of ruminated into the adults that they are and they present in the movie and so in real life that was really interesting to experience because, you know, Jr. and Lyndon and I, we old souls, we, you know, we come into it, you know, the, the, the time passage was different for us than it was for, for the younger cast. And then that was a beautiful thing to see is like everybody shining in their own way in real life as well. Yeah, no, I mean, it's amazing to see how much each individual person has gone since the show. And now that you're all coming back together after all that, it's really incredible, honestly, that yeah. almost the whole entire cast came into this again. And I mean, it's just, it's great. Yeah. Um. So now speaking of, you said that this whole cast is like a family yes. coming into this, you know, you've been doing a few things, Chicago Fire, um, mm -hmm. a, a podcast, Bridgewater, and you were on the Netflix original Thunder Force. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. You have to put Melissa McCarthy, Octavia Spencer in something. You know, it's going to be madness. And that's what it, that movie was. <laughs> it was so much fun. Oh, it my was God. so much fun. And then Ben, Melissa's husband, was the director. So it was mm -hmm. like this trisomy of friendship. Um, He shared, actually, in between takes um, that they had been friends for like 20 years. Oh they were gosh. up and coming friends for 20 years and they specifically had always um, talked about doing a project together. So they wrote Thunder Force 
so they could work together. And that's what we need to do. Exactly. We need to like write projects so that we can keep like the family alive. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Honestly. what an amazing opportunity that they have as, as friends to be able to do that. And, you know, Hollywood in general does as well. Exactly. And, you know, honestly, that's those those that that's one of those movies that like, you know, I'm chilling at home with some friends, have a couple drinks, we turn it on, have some laughs. And, yes. you know, those are like you said, just get your friends together. It doesn't have to be a whole big production. It can be just something fun and entertaining. And that's right. exactly what that movie was. So as far as doing all those roles and everything, was it kind of hard to come back to Melissa McCall or was she always kind of in the back of your mind waiting to come back out? <sighs> Uh, good question. Um, you know, I did, I did have many sessions with myself, so to speak, to think about like, where would she be now? What would have changed? How is it now to have an, you know, an adult son versus the son that we, we last saw on the show. And so there was, there was a little bit of thought progression, but, um, the amazing thing was at the beginning of shooting the movie, we actually had about a week to 10 days to go back to Los Angeles and actually shoot in the stages. Some of the stages still survive there. Yes. At our old facility, the stages are up and they're actually rented out for other productions and they're changed around maybe a little bit and then turned back into what, you know, that happens at a lot of, you know, you right. want to use, you want to use the hospital. Great. You want to paint it pink. Sure. Just paint it back to Beacon Hills blue, you know? <laughs> exactly. Um, and so it was literally walking back into home. So we walked into the hospital. We walked into the halls of the school that were still there, the sheriff's office, some other other sets that were there as well. And some of the crew were, were there working as well that couldn't make it to Atlanta. So it literally, I mean, we joke about it, but it felt like a fever dream. It's like, what's happening? <laughs> literally, no is this time the, has passed at all. Wow. That, that's so incredible. And the fact that, you know, it's the exact same sets. It's not just a, you know, regurgitated, fake thing that it's the exact same place that that has to be a great feeling it was um, great now as far as going from like an mtv a cable television you know production studio versus paramount plus was there any major differences i know like some product or streaming services have more freedom and flexibility so what was the difference for the pro was there any major predict major differences in the production great question um from my perspective, and something that I say, um, when we were shooting the movie, when we were shooting the shows, it felt like we were shooting an independent movie every week. Okay. They were jam tight, the full sense. days. Everybody was giving it their best. We were all really exhausted, um, and so now we had an opportunity to take that, you know, one week of a movie and spread it out over time. And so, uh, and it's a different way of shooting. This is something that I have learned because. You know, for me, all my other projects that you were kind enough to mention, you know, I'm in and out. I'm in for a couple of days. I'm shaking. I'm grooving. I'm moving on to the next thing. Everywhere. This a was bit of everywhere. A, yeah, a little bit everywhere. But this was a significant amount of time shooting a feature film. So for me, that and not an independent film, one that had a lot of money. So <laughs> it it what felt different was we could breathe a little bit more. Right. And, and, and it was the same creative team, you know, our, our camera departments, they, they tried to get the same, the same guys. And so creativity, creativity, whatever that word is, um, it, it felt good and it felt right. And it felt like they had, had the, the time to set up the shots and really look at locations and really bring, you know, this, this uh, in the future Teen Wolf to life. And so that was really interesting to experience because we shot part of it in Los Angeles and then part of it in Atlanta. Oh, that's super cool. The fact that, you know, you had much more, not like such a strict schedule, you have to shoot so much and get all these episodes out in a certain amount of time, you have right. this flexibility, these times to right. learn. It, it, that's really cool. And I think that it'll show in the film that the difference in working and everything like that, the show versus the film that you had this more time and flexibility right. and everything and I, I feel like that'll show the trailers already looked amazing compared yeah. to the mtv tv shows so yes i don't want to say that um how do you say this because you hit the nail on the head when you, when you start television production you're a few episodes ahead right mm -hmm. let's say four to six ahead but once it starts you can't stop exactly you know and so for for us we shot most of this back in march april March, mm -hmm. April, May. So, and we even had a week of pickups. And so all of a sudden, again, it was just, 
you had a little bit more air in it. You had a little bit more time. If if we lost something, it wasn't a panic to make sure that there was an insert shot of a phone passing by through a scene that we forgot, you know, for episode 104, whatever it was, it, they were able to recoup and, and really get a handle on it. And that happens with every show, Chicago Fire, Grey's Anatomy. I mean, it's a machine. Once mm-hmm. that machine starts, you can't stop it. Yeah, no, and I feel like also with being a film, like you said, they're not constantly working on things, so they're not going to have those little errors like the screen. Like I've noticed in so many shows where the phone screens, there's just they're not doing anything what they're supposed to be doing and things like that. So I feel like with the movie, they have a lot more time to focus on this, get the CGI, get the editing, everything down perfectly versus whereas a TV show, it can be like, oh, it's a it's a 30 minute hour TV show. They don't have to do as well and as you know detailed as they would a movie, you know, or you just don't have the time. Yeah, you exactly. Know, the time. To, yeah. It's, it's yeah. the deliverable of it all. Right. And also with a with a movie, with any movie franchise premiere, I would think there's so many eyes on it that people are, you know, that's how that, you know, the Starbucks coffee cup and, you know, um, Game of Thrones, you know, it's because everybody's just kind of doing their job and going through. But now we have 50 fresh eyes that are looking at it. Let's say 51 eyes that are looking at it and making sure that it's it's top to tails, the best thing that, you know, um, our fans and friends can see. Exactly. And, you know, I think that the, the movie is going to be it's bringing in not only old fans, but now Paramount Plus is a big streaming service. It's going to bring a lot of new fans to the Teen Wolf fandom. So it's kind of like restarting the whole fandom over again. I'm really excited to see because I've been here since day one. So I'm excited to see everyone new that it brings in and watched like the TikToks and their theories as they're rewatching the show for the first time. So it's going to be so exciting to see. Yeah. And I think that'll be, a uh, again, you're hitting the nail on the head. You know, someone that watched all 100 episodes, they'll be able to watch the movie and I feel be satisfied with it. And then someone that hasn't watched it, I think it's it's an all encompassing, you know, I can start and stop and understand the the legacy, the history, the characters. And so a new person will be able to pick up right from the top and not feel like they're being left out of anything. No, and I, I think that's incredible because it... <laughs> The time span is perfect because it's like the generational gap when people were teenagers watching the show. Now they're, you know, young adults. And then there were kids who are now teenagers that can watch the show and watch the film. So it's just going to bring in so many new fans. And I'm so excited to see that. And um, there are I do have a question about you. We were speaking earlier about you were concerned about bringing in like how you did have the show. And there's so much more story versus like a one and a half, two hour film do you think that they did encompassed it well enough for a film with having so much story? It looks like this is jam packed full from beginning to end. So do you think I, it's going to feel a little bit rushed or do you think that they did everything nice and smooth and that it, it'll feel like it'll feel like a whole season in a movie? Well, I mean, I guess we'll have to talk after the movie comes out and well, you can tell true. me. That's but true. from my perspective, you know, there's a certain amount of setup because we have to meet these characters where they're mm-hmm. at. Right. And so there is a certain amount of setup in the beginning. And then, you know, they had to pick and choose who are they going to battle. Right. As far as the baddie of of, of the movie and, and everything that that means. And so. I believe that it's set up so that everybody gets satisfaction of reintroduction to the characters how we, you know, all come together. And then in the end, you know, the satisfaction of, you know, again, coming together to champion one another and, and you know, uh, survive, survive and love and thrive and new relationships, old relationships coming back. And so I think they, they, they really, I mean, it was a gargantuan task. I can, I can only imagine for other shows as well. Like if, if there was ever a supernatural movie, Lord, how, what would they, <laughs> what would they pick? You know, oh they could gosh. pick anything that they wanted, you know? you know? And so it almost becomes a, a heavier cross to bear because you, you're, you're, you know, you're just going through a candy store saying, I want this, I want this, I want this, you know, all of it's great. So what they, what they settled on, I think, I think will, um, I think will bring um, a lot of satisfaction to the fans. No, I, and I think the trailers, they look absolutely, it looks terrifying. It looks it so great. Um, and Jeff you know, likes we're to getting, put us in peril all the time. He, he does. And, yeah. you know, each season, the villains got more terrifying and terrifying. Yes. And honestly, we're getting a look back now at 
you know, it looks like the uh, Nigitsune is coming back. So I'm really yes. excited to see that. That was one of my favorites. Um, we'll get into that a little bit in a minute. Um, but before we do, I want to touch on this time jump. So at the end of season four, I actually just rewatched, or at the season six, I just rewatched the finale today. Um, mm -hmm. We see, you know, Scott bringing in people, initiating his pack and everything like that. So this film, we see Derek Hale has a son, Eli, 15 years old. Is this really 15 years in the future or did there, was there like some magic where he went to Mexico and got a teenage boy like when he got turned into one? <laughs> That's a whole nother movie. <laughs> no, um, it's actually 15 years. They settled on 15 years for whatever. I, you know, I, I don't think I'm giving anything away. With that, <laughs> but if we know that the kid's 15. Hello. Right. So, you know, it is set in enough in the future that, again, we meet our characters where they are at currently. And so that you know, that that's a significant amount of time. That's that's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, that's a lot of living in 15 years. And you see that where everyone is. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because it's only been, you know, a third of that in, in real time. So I'm excited yeah. to see how they age the care. I mean, obviously, they, they're not going to do much, but I mean, to see exactly how they make them look that much more mature than they actually are. So I, mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see that. Yeah. Um as far as Melissa goes, so before I get into this next question, I just have to ask, this has been on my mind since episode one. Okay. Melissa McCall, it, yeah. was that, was her name Melissa or did it just, like, how did that, because your name is Melissa, did it, did you get to choose or was it actually written in there that her name was Melissa? To my best recollection, it was always Melissa. Okay. Always Melissa. Um, and so that gave everyone advantage of knowing my name first day on <laughs> set. Um to be honest, it was the first time I ever had a cast chair. So oh it actually God. had the cast chair with my name on it. Oh and I was so nervous. I didn't even sit in my chair for almost <laughs> two weeks. I would sit in other people's chair and I would just be like, that's my chair. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. I was just... such a dork. But um, these are, these are the experiences that you think as an actor, you know, that, you know, not everybody gets to attain, you know, not everybody gets to have a cast chair. And so <laughs> I know that's such a small thing and probably a, a totally random story that I'm sharing with you. But um, yeah, to my recollection, it was always Melissa. Okay. Yeah, no, that's just always been on my mind. I'm like, cause you know, like, like that's O'Raven, like, you know, they obviously yes. changed the name to her. So I was like, I don't know, like, did they just like the name Melissa McCall, the double mm -hmm. M's? So mm -hmm. no, that that's really cool that it was that easy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um. So is there a favorite Melissa moment that you have or just something that you particularly stands out a favorite scene or anything like that that you have from Teen Wolf? Well, I always love the scenes where Jeff pulled from um, conversations that he had with his own mom. So the Be Your uh -huh. Own Anchor speech actually was an, a speech that that he, uh, his mother gave to him. Um, you know, the shooting all over yourself, I believe, was a, a conversation that he had with his brother. You know, Jeff's a twin. Jeff, oh my gosh, Jeff no, I didn't. Mm -hmm. He's a twin. And so um, I also believe like when I watch um, episode, uh, the season three with the twin alpha. Oh, yeah, know, yep, the, yep, yep. The Carver yeah, twins. A, yeah, the Carver twins. Um, there's a lot probably of their relationship in there a little bit or a fantasy of their twin relationship, you know. Oh. And um, speaking of the twins, in and this is a spoiler alert. For anyone that hasn't watched the show, so I'm going to give you a three, two, one. In the death scene between the twins, when they put their their foreheads together, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that they put the, kind of like yep, their foreheads yep. together for a moment. And uh, when I was watching it, it hit me right in the heart because that's what my family does: is that we put our little foreheads together. And when my mom lost her parents, and she was actually in this room with her brother. Uh, my uncle, they put their foreheads together. And I remember my um, uncle saying, um, it's just us now. <gasps> right? I just got goosebumps. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just us now. And then in the last season, when I'm in the hospital, right. And, and, and Tyler Scott comes to visit me. There was, he was supposed to, I think it was written that he was supposed to like kiss my forehead or hold my hand or something like that. And I was like, Hey dude, I want to, I want to see if this resonates with you because this is something that my family does. We put our foreheads together and he was like, dude, I was actually thinking of that because my family does that too. Oh and so God. organically he, we did that in, in that scene. And um, that was a real emotional scene. 
that was really tough. I actually was crying in between takes. I just kept like, it just kept coming. It just kept coming. And sometimes as an actor, you, you would rather it just keep, you know, the crew knows that you're just going to be a basket case and they kind of work around you and they're like, excuse me, you know, <laughs> as they're exactly. moving lights or whatever they need to do. But that was a super um, tender moment as well. Yeah, no, I think, I, I don't know about my favorite, but one that will always like, stick in my mind is season four episode eight when we think scott is dead oh. and oh my gosh her earth shattering scream and cry yes. fall to the ground and like we the audience didn't know that he wasn't dead at this point like after that i was full i'm like there's no way this is this was renewed for another season like how is it teen wolf without him and then as soon as she walks up to the morgue and she's like, I hate this plan. I literally went from like sobbing to like, oh my gosh, I hate this show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, Thanks no, for saying that. Yeah, your emotion. Like, and I think that your mom, your momness, I guess I would call it, is just so incredible throughout this show. You were so, so supportive. And I saw, I was watching the finale today and you were you know, kicking ass and everything like that. So it's just, you melded into this whole wolf, wolf community, monster community, and you just accepted it. And it's just super awesome. And even in the trailer for the newest film, you were giving him an emotional speech about, yeah. you know, he has to go find Allison, have her remember who she is and everything like yeah. that. So it, it's really incredible to see that even after 15 years of dealing with this, she is still as supportive as she was on day one. Well, thank you for saying that. I mean, I think that both Tyler and I would really appreciate you saying that. Um, it was also very interesting because I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what we talked about before that scene that you're talking about in the in the trailer, because mm -hmm. that's obviously a little bit more meaty scene in the movie itself. But it it felt different because. You know, your your relationship with your with your child changes at some point when they kind of take the torch and they're running with it, right? When they've had the experience and then they, maybe they're making their choices and and they come to you for advice or guidance in a different way. And it organically felt different that that whole interchange, it wasn't like, it was no longer um, telling him what to do or trying to teach him what to do as a parent, you know, um, son relationship. It was like, and it wasn't even advising him what to do. It was like collaborating with him almost in a way it right. felt it felt different and i'm and i'm glad that it felt different because it should feel different you know yeah it's been 15 he's, years you know your relationship has yeah exactly right man makes his own choices but if you know encouragement if you feel this way then you need to do it go 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 exactly and you know i i you know i'm really scared and excited to see what's happened over the past 15 years for everybody um, as far as Melissa, I know you can't really give too much away, but last we saw her, she was, you know, working at the hospital. Was she working? I can't. Was she working at the hospital? Oh, yeah. in the OK, I, th I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, her and Archer. Uh, yes. Arch yeah, they were having their relationship. Ardent. Argent. Argent. Ar Argent. Archer. Yeah, Argent. Argent. I was Argent. thinking, yeah, Allison is the Archer. <laughs> Listen, I make I make this joke all the time. You know, Mama McCall has more has more boyfriends and husbands and ex whatever's <laughs> on the show than any other character. So she wins. It, there exactly. could there could have been an Archie in there. You never True. know. True. True. So, you know, that's how <laughs> we last saw her. What can we expect to see? Obviously, you know, she's still the same supporting mother we saw in the trailer. But what can we expect to see? from her what has changed is there anything really different about melissa mccall that over the past 15 years well within 15 years now she owns the hospital not only does she do every job at the hospital but now she actually owns it no i'm oh kidding my... um but oh, <laughs> you got me so excited i'm like this oh, girl she no, is a, no. a boss <laughs> uh, but you know she, she's still diligently saving lives mm -hmm. and i think that i think that what will be interesting is that the writers took the opportunity to make new um, alliances and allegiances in this um, movie. And so that is something new that you'll see. You'll see you'll see some of the adults coming together in a way maybe that you hadn't before. And, uh, you know, people relying on people to uh, pull them through. And so that, you know, I can't get any more than that. But that right, right. that that I, I found to be very interesting this time around. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, the enemy of your enemy is still your enemy, but you have to make them your friend. Exactly. Right. You know, when the fate of the world comes into play, you don't know who you're going to have to team up with. All bets are off. <laughs> um, but no, there is a lot of the original cast returning, uh, some that we never thought we'd see again, like uh, Crystal Reed, Allison Argent, even though it may not be the same Allison that we know and love. 
Um, there's a few new faces like Vince Mattis as Eli Hale, Derek's son, Amy Lynn Workman as uh, Hikari Zhang. Um, mm -hmm. But there is, I just want to touch briefly on this. There is a fan favorite that is missing from the cast. Uh, Dylan O'Brien uh, Styles. we have to respect his decision to not return. But a lot of fans question whether the story will address you know, his absence. And after seeing the trailer personally, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel that if the, you know, the Nigitsune returned, I, if I was Styles, I probably wouldn't want to come back to Beacon Hills either. <laughs> so, I mean, so I can respect that. So at least from my perspective, I feel like them writing that in there, you know, kind of voids, voids, voids that out for me. <laughs> um, You know, that like, that does make sense anyways but does the film you know touch on that or does styles just not mentioned so what you're saying is what i'm hearing from you is that styles is the only person that <laughs> learned their lesson to stay away from beacon hills is i he, mean i guess <laughs> he's he's like i'm not going back you guys you <laughs> no. guys but allison's back styles oh, that is not allison <laughs> but still I think that, um, you know, again, we'll have to talk after the movie comes out to see what everybody's tone is on it. But I believe that, uh, you know, everybody wanted Styles there. And so I think that they prob they found a way in the best way that they could to pay homage to a to someone that they wanted and they loved and they they respect to still carry on in this movie as much as they can without being there. And that's a real honest, that's a real honest answer. I mean, everybody wanted him back. And, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, at some point, everybody has to make their own personal choices. And so he did. And we, we honor that as his friends and as his coworkers. Uh, did we miss him? Hell yeah, we missed him. I'm sorry. That's my dog. Can oh, I let her in really quick? Yeah, you go. You go right ahead. Sophie. interview <laughs> she's a big girl oh what, what breed is she she's come here she's um part german shepherd oh, oh my gosh she's gorgeous <laughs> she's a big girl she's um part german shepherd part bull terrier so Ooh. she's she's a big girl you'd lose her in the snow up here in wisconsin yes. <laughs> yes she would love it she actually gets outside when it's like 30 degrees and she just lays out there like a big old marshmallow Oh, um, so yeah. So I'm sorry. I had to break that. She, she had been barking and I was afraid to, that she was going to get the door down or something. <laughs> so, um, to your point, you know, I think that, you know, again, we all, we all wanted him there. And I think that the writers and Jeff Davis and the creators found a way to, to honor styles as much as they could in the movie. And, um, and I think the fans will be, I hope the fans will be happy with that. And you know what you just said, honestly, that satisfies me. And I think any true Teen Wolf fan at heart, you know, will be satisfied with at least having some sort of homage, some not just throwing him in the dust, right. you know, yeah. and and even like I said, the Nigitsune plot for me, that's enough for me. Like if I was Styles, I wouldn't want to come back anyways, just with the right. Nigitsune back. So right. I'm very happy to hear that. And all those haters out there, you hear that too, you know, yeah. I, <laughs> this, this film is, I mean, I already know it's going to be beautiful. It's not based off of one person. 99% of the whole cast is there. So that is the family. That is the teen wolf that I grew up loving. So that's what I, you know, what I care about. And yeah. I think that's what anybody who is a true fan should care about. Not one and, person as much as he'll be missed. Right. And we were lucky, you know, to have him back for season seven, but there was a mm -hmm. majority season seven season six we were lucky yes. to have him back for season six we're like yes season seven <laughs> right season yeah, seven. yeah 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 <laughs> season seven can anyone do i get a season seven right. um <laughs> you know hey stranger things have happened You're but right. um you know in season six there was a there was a large part of where we we didn't have styles as a character and we we still were able to um tell a great story and a great homage to everyone that was still there and so uh you know yeah, it happens on every show. On every show, there's somebody that's beloved that has to move on and for whatever reason. And I'm just glad that, um, you know, we're all still on the ride together as much as we can be. Well, uh, I'm excited to see what you guys put together. And I know it's going to be great regardless. And um, the one thing that that worries me, though, is there's been a lot of TV shows coming back as movies or coming back years later as reboots. 
what sets Teen Wolf the movie separate from those recent ones? What's going to make it stand out and make it, yes, this is really good years later? Wow, that's a really great question. Making her think tonight. <laughs> yeah, I think if I if I had to answer that, I believe that the camaraderie and the true chemistry that we have as a cast I believe uh, the family that we've created with with our crew and our cast, and we have an amazing crew that worked both in Los Angeles and in Atlanta to bring, you know, the spirit of what the TV show was to the movie. And so it's not like we're trying to reinvent the wheel. We're, we're just, a, a you know, it's it, and I don't want to say that it's the same wheel because it, it's not, but it's it's we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't believe in in it and we wouldn't be making it if it wasn't entertaining. And so I don't know if that necessarily answers your question, but we did it because it had a heart for us. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it for any other reason. I don't think Jeff would have done it for any other reason. I mean, you know, Jeff's busy, <laughs> he's yeah. busy and it takes a lot to write a movie and it takes a lot to manage everybody to, to be there. And, uh, you know, again, all of, all of our producers, writers our, our transpo i mean casting they we all came together to, to make something really special and all i can hope is that when you see it that you feel the same way well i will definitely let you know afterwards i'll be like melissa this is what i thought of the movie yes <laughs> um but no i think that that is going to show that you guys are actually a family. I mean, we got it through, like you said, we did feel it throughout the seasons that you guys are not just this group of people who comes and does a job together for, right. you know, 20 episodes a year or something like that, that you guys actually are this family. And it's obviously shown it's stuck throughout the years to come back and do this. And it's not just in it for the money. It's in it for, you know, you're doing it because you want to continue on the characters, the story. And I think that is definitely going to set it apart from other projects because there's so many projects that come back with reboots that are just not good that just you know they are you can tell they're just in it because it's a popular thing right now but i think if like you said you can feel the heart and the you know the, the family in the cast and in the story that that is what's going to set it apart and i can't wait to see it Ah, uh, well, that's the biggest compliment. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Yes, of course. And, you know, you were talking about how um, Jeff Davis is a busy, busy man. Yes. Uh, that brings me into my next question a little bit. So it's been half of a decade since Teen Wolf ended. We're finally getting the movie, which, of course, we couldn't be more excited about. But we're also a little bit scared because, you know, anything that you've been waiting for, we've been waiting for this for a long time, a seventh season or a movie. But now it's finally here. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that this closes the book on the Teen Wolf universe and gives fan like a fi fans a final closure? I know Jeff is getting his new show literally the same day as Wolfpack. the movie Wolfpack, uh, which is a different is a whole different thing. So is this kind of like the conclusion to Teen Wolf and then him starting up the whole Wolfpack universe or is there still a possible Teen Wolf universe in the future? I would like to think that there's still a possible Teen Wolf universe in the future, but only time and fans will tell, you know, I mean, there is there's a certain amount of, um, you know, interest that we hope that the movie has and that we're we're really, you know, banking on. Um, and I and I believe that people will, will tune in for it because, again, it's it's a world Teen Wolf has been always been a worldwide phenomenon. And now that it's a movie and now that it's on Paramount Plus, that just means more exposure for more people around the world. So for me, I think that it can only go up from here. And if it can only go up from here and there's interest. Exactly. So so you'd be down to do more personally. You'd be back to I come back as to. Melissa. Yes, absolutely. And okay. I'm here to tell you, I'm one of the I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Wolfpack. And some of our crew stayed actually to work on Wolfpack and they have nothing but amazing things to say. And they would tell me if it was not. And <laughs> right. So stylistically, I think it's beautiful. Um, The cast. I don't know if you've seen any of this cast photos, but they gorgeous people. Yes, I have. I've seen the, the little, there's been like a couple clips and little photos and everything I've been following all along. I'm excited. At first I thought it, and when they first announced it, I thought it was like a spinoff because they were coming out mm -hmm. on the same day, but then I looked more into it and it's a whole nother thing, but I'm really excited for um, 
Buffy, the actress who plays Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh yes, this this little known um, fresh faced actress. Yes, I, mean, I think this is the first thing she's ever done. What is her name? What is her name? I think it's a uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. That, maybe, that, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Tune in. She was she's slaying vampires, and now she's what slaying werewolves or doing something yes. with werewolves in this universe. So. Yes. She's yes. just going, working her way through the month. Every decade, it's a different monster. <laughs> I mean, she's an icon. She she's is. an icon. Um, she's she is a complete professional. She's beautiful, and I think that she was the perfect choice to lead um, Wolfpack into many, many, many more seasons. Yeah, well, I'm definitely excited to see it. I know it's going to be a really long day for me on uh, January 26th because yes. first things first, I'm going to stay up until like midnight when they both, you know, drop. I'll watch Teen Wolf the movie first, then I'll go into Wolf Pack. So I'll be up until like, you know, 5 a.m. But hey, it'll be worth it. I'll be all it'll wolfed be out. It. Yeah, <laughs> all wolfed <laughs> out. I might, <laughs> I might have to um, steal that from you. Oh, you go, you go right ahead. As Thank long you. as you credit me. No, just kidding. I will. I will. <laughs> so we actually got through everything really quick. There's just one more thing that I want to do. Just a little fun thing before okay. we go. I want to test your teen wolf knowledge. Oh, so, no. <laughs> no, it's oh, fine. No. It's fine. It's just five short questions. Most of them are pretty easy. I mean, they are for me. I don't, I don't know about you, but they are for okay. me. <laughs> okay. So first, how did Scott and Styles meet? Um, they met on a blind date. Actually, they met in the sandbox when they were four years old. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm going to lose this game. But thank <laughs> no, that, no, that's fine. There's still yeah, four I'm going to go for the comedy. There's... I'm going to, yeah. So what was, okay, so I don't know if you remember this, but this is a very iconic scene from this season one. So it's uh, in school right after Scott gets bit playing lacrosse. Jackson's like, what is going on? Why is this kid so good? He goes up to his locker and he's like, where are you getting your juice? My what mom does... does all the grocery shopping. Yeah, exactly. Oh, see, see, there you go. You redeemed yourself. You got the second one. <laughs> that one, literally, that is the funny. I think that's one of the funniest lines in the show. Super cute. So yeah, super cute. Just so clueless. It's so adorable. <laughs> totally. Yeah, no, they did right by that line. Yeah, that oh my gosh, so funny. And I think um I actually was just watching an interview today um with Colton or oh my gosh, what is his oh my gosh, I can't think of his name, who plays um oh my gosh, who plays Jackson. Um Yeah, Colton. Colton, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was doing an interview and he was he was joking. He's like, Yeah, at every Comic Con, Scott and I have to say that at the panels, <laughs> they make us say it. And I'm like, Yeah, because it's it's iconic, you know, it, iconic. it is literally it's so good. funny. Yes, it's it good. is. Well, hey, you redeemed yourself with that one. Let's see if Thank you can you. get the next three. Okay. So um, the Ghost Rider is one of the yes. scarier villains in the series. Uh, who had the ability to see them when using their powers? There is one person who could use them. He could turn invisible. I don't remember. His name is Wait, Corey. What? Oh, was it? Yes, Corey. Corey, he could he could turn invisible and he could see them when he was invisible because oh my they gosh, had the I completely forgot that. Okay. <laughs> no, you, you're told it, it, I, I threw in a couple hard ones in there. Yeah, so that's, so that's fine. One, you got yeah. one out of three. One okay. out of three. We we can still we can still turn this around. So this one I I feel like you have to get this one because you were pretty close close with him in the show. Oh, okay. What is Deaton's first name? Doctor. Well, that's his title, but his first name is Alan. Oh, I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't no, have known that. No, that's fine. I honestly wouldn't have known that either if I didn't look up these some trivia oh, really? questions. I was, <laughs> like, I was just gonna make something smart snarky. I was gonna be like, well, <laughs> no. I didn't date him on the show, so I wouldn't have known his first name. No, but you guys were like, I mean, I think you kicked did you oh, guys totally. kick butt a couple yeah, you guys kicked butt a couple times together. Totally. So but mm -hmm. you know, he yeah, he usually goes by Doctor or Deaton. So mm -hmm. I, I literally I had to look up what episode, when do they say that? Because I'm like, I don't remember, but I, yeah, so I'm yeah. So no, that's, that's fine. That's a deep you, one. That's good. That that's is. Good. There's one more. Okay. And this one I actually had to go back and look to because I didn't believe it. I'm like, no, there that that's not true. Um, so how many nebatons are there in the world? In the whole in world? The world? 
Think of how many wonders there are in the world. Seven. Yes. Well, okay. look at you. You got, look at you go, Melissa. You're so good. <laughs> Before you gave me that clue, I was going to say 57, but <laughs> I, there was a seven that was in there. The five was just trying to push, you know, that just ignore the five. You, you okay. got the second half and there we go. So I do have one bonus question. Yes. And I hope I hope you get this one, but I'm not so sure that you're going to after. No, yeah, the, no, I'm just... failing. I'm totally <laughs> failing. It's totally fine. So in season five, um, yes. there was a boy who threatened to kill Sheriff Stilinski. What was his name? Um, Jim. No, his name was my name, Donovan. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. That, that was a twist. That is a twist. <laughs> um, but no, literally, as, when I was watching that for the first time live, I heard like Sheriff say Donovan and Styles say Donovan. I'm like, yes, what did you just say? Oh, I, oh. I was like, did they I had to go him? back and rewind? Did, did Styles Stilinski just say my name? Like, <laughs> But no, oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, that was so fun. Um, You got a couple right there. So hey, not too bad. I mean, I got one on my own. <laughs> Two yeah. with assistance. Yeah. But they're yeah. all great questions. It, yeah, Thank no. You. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, absolutely this has been an absolute blast, Melissa. I'm so excited for the movie to come out in just over a month, January 26th. Thank Teen you. Wolf the movie on Paramount Plus. I have enjoyed our chat today. And I thank you so much for taking the time to join me. I know it's Friday, probably have a fun weekend planned, but um, thank you. Thank you. And Sophie thanks you too in the background. <laughs> Absolutely, Sophie. Her. Yeah, but, thank um, you, Sophie. She looks like a wolf, so she's really excited about the premiere as well. And we're all very excited. And thank you so much for your time. And uh, we will converse after the movie because I'd love to know your thoughts. Oh, absolutely. I will definitely okay. hit you up on Instagram or something. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. You have a great rest of your night and weekend, Melissa. Thanks. You too. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.